Hey guys, Christian here from PhoneFox, and today we've had some more exciting news from Apple with their 2015 keynote announcement. So lots of great upgrades being mentioned, and they've also unveiled a few new devices. Now the iPad Pro looks amazing, and they've also got the Apple Pencil to go with it. There's the new Apple TV with some pretty amazing features, and also the much anticipated release of the iPhone 6S and the iPhone 6S Plus. So let's get straight into it with the highlights of the Apple Watch. First up, and most notably, the Apple Watch is going to be released in some new colors. Now this is the aluminium version that'll be released in a new gold and rose gold version. So you'll be paying the same price for these, but you'll get that more premium feel. So no further hardware upgrades, but there was a few mentions of software and application upgrades, uh, particularly in the medical field with uh, medical monitoring, so one example is the ability to monitor your baby's heart rate. So if you're a mother like me, then you'll be super excited about getting pregnant. But all in all, not a lot happening in the Apple Watch department. On a much more exciting note, they unveiled the iPad Pro. This is a 12.9 inch diagonal display. Uh, now it's a retina display and the width is actually the same height as the old iPad. The screen has a resolution of 2732 by 2048 pixels with 264 pixels per square inch. A total of 5.6 million pixels. Now of course this is a much larger iPad than any of the predecessors, giving you an impressive 78% more screen area. And actually, overall, the iPad Pro doesn't look too bulky. It's only 6.9 millimeters thick. They've got a new variable refresh rate for the screen, uh, so this will hopefully help save battery. And you're looking at about 10 hours battery time, which is pretty standard on all the iPads. Now with that larger screen, we're also gonna be getting some hardware upgrades. So with the new A9X chip, you're gonna be getting up to 1.8 times faster speeds than the predecessors, 22 times faster than the original iPad, which was pretty impressive. We're expecting to see two times the graphics processing power of the predecessor, the iPad 2. So like all other iPads, you've got the on-screen display keyboard, but Apple have now released their own keyboard, and they're going to call this the smart keyboard. Now it actually connects up to the iPad Pro with a magnetic connector, so no annoying little pins or anything like that, which is great to see, and it also charges through that connection as well. Third-party developers will be able to use this magnetic connector for different third-party accessories, so should be interesting to see what they come up with. And something that I've been waiting to see personally on the iPad is the additional speakers which they've added. Now they've added a total of four speakers, which should make for a pretty good movie going experience. They're also saying that it's supposed to be three times louder than the old iPad Air 2. Looking at the internals on how these speakers are laid out, uh, you can see there is quite a lot of space wasted. Now, could they have just gone with two speakers and maybe just increase the battery size? Probably. But all in all, I'm really liking the look of the iPad Pro. Now this will be released in November and it'll set you back $799 US dollars, $949 US dollars or $1079 US dollars, depending on what memory size you're going for. Now with the Apple Pro, they've unveiled something brand new to the Apple family, which is the Apple Pencil. So these two will work hand in hand uh, the Apple Pencil looks like it's gonna be a pretty good device. It's got sensors in the tip of the pencil that allows you to detect the position, the force, and the tilt of the pencil. So it's gonna be a great thing to use if you're a designer, an architect, or if you just really like to draw. I don't think that it's gonna be as advanced as Wacom's and Chua's products, but it's good to see that Apple is stepping it up and trying to get into that market. The next on the list, we've got the Apple TV. Now this has got some pretty impressive features and a brand new remote to go with it. Being an Apple TV user myself, I got pretty excited when I saw the remote. Uh, they've actually added some more buttons to it, which I guess will be needed for some of the new features. Uh, they've also added this glass swipe panel, which allows you to just slide across and uh, easily navigate through the Apple TV. I really like the demonstration showing how you can use the glide panel to easily fast forward and rewind to specific points in a video. Uh, with the old Apple TV remote, it was a little bit more difficult. 
So with Apple TV OS, you'll also be able to download apps to your Apple TV, so games, music, etc. Uh, there's a few other software upgrades like Siri integration. So you can now use Siri to search for things on your Apple TV. So for example, you can search by genre, uh, actor's name, or just by movie title if you like. And Siri will actually do a wide search of all your content applications, meaning it'll bring up results from all of these apps, including Hulu, Netflix, etc. There's also all the normal Siri functions like asking what the weather is, and they've also added some pretty cool intuitive features. Check this out. Show that modern family episode with Edward Norton. Siri takes me right to the Modern Family page with the episode I was looking for already selected. Skip ahead seven minutes. And for those times when I just missed what was said, what did she say? Siri will skip back 15 seconds and temporarily turn on the caption. Some new movies that are good to watch with kids. All right, great. Um, Paddington looks good. So all in all, the Apple TV is looking pretty cool, uh, but the biggest letdown for me is that they haven't included 4K support. Now, this is a big letdown. Uh, the fact that Netflix supports 4K, we've got 4K TVs being produced very cheaply nowadays, and 4K is the way of the future. You think that they would have included that finally the moment that we've all been waiting for the unveiling of the iPhone 6s and the iPhone 6s plus so in terms of design there's nothing new here uh, they look pretty much exactly the same but it does come in a new rose gold version and it looks like those rumors were correct uh, they are using a new 7000 series aluminium which should make the phones a lot stronger and stop that bending from happening so that's great news both screen sizes have stayed the same at 4.7 and 5.5 inches and they've included a new type of glass which should make the screens a lot more durable. The screens will be using Apple's new technology called 3D Touch allowing for more of a 3D interface. So there's two new ways of using your device and they're called peak and pop which is essentially a light push and a hard push. Uh, you can use these to access additional drop downs on applications and you could essentially peek into things like emails, messages, uh, you could even peek into URLs without actually going into it and you could pop straight back just by releasing your finger from the screen. And there's a new way of multitasking using force swipe to move sideways between the apps. Third party developers like Facebook and Instagram are already using this touch technology to add different features to the applications and I'm sure there'll be a whole bunch of new applications coming out that's going to make the most use of this technology as well. Now one thing that wasn't mentioned is that with all this added technology uh, you're actually getting a slightly thicker phone. So you're looking at a total extra thickness of two millimeters in comparison with the predecessors which isn't too bad considering the additional technology. We'll also be seeing a 70% increase in CPU performance with the new A9 chip and the M9 coprocessor. And we're also gonna get a graphics increase compared to the last generation. Second generation Touch ID will be two times faster. And the obvious one is the camera upgrade to the 12 megapixel camera with eyesight sensors. And all of these sample photos that they've shown are looking pretty damn good. The camera seems to perform very well in low light conditions and the photos are looking nice and sharp. They've added a couple of new features like this moving photo feature. They say that it's not going to affect your storage too much, although I'm pretty skeptical about that because I've got a huge photo library so I'd like to see how that's going to work. The rear camera can do full HD and ultra HD 4K recording and we've now got a 5 megapixel front facing camera so that is a big upgrade so you can take some high res selfies and use it for FaceTime video calling. And we've got a few connectivity upgrades with two times the LTE download speed and also the Wi-Fi speed has been doubled as well. Both of these will be released together on September the 25th so what did you guys think of Apple's announcements? Are they living up to your expectations? Is this exactly what you expected? I actually really liked some of the new features, uh, but maybe you feel differently. So just let us know in the comments below. If you haven't already, then hit that subscribe button. Be sure to check out some of our other videos and we'll see you guys next time.